These unsolved mysteries have puzzled people for many years. The horrible truth about mysteries is all the unanswered questions they leave behind. So from a group of children that went missing to an unexplained aircraft disappearance, here we have five unsolved mysteries. Though the US is home to dozens of abandoned hospitals, each with a reputation for ghosts, one facility stands out from the rest, Waverly Hills. The former sanatorium regularly tops most haunted rankings and has appeared on just about every ghost hunting show in America. Waverly Hills Sanatorium opened its doors on July the 26th, 1910 and housed thousands of patients suffering from tuberculosis. The facility originally accommodated between 40 and 50 patients but expanded to hold over 400 at a time. Waverly operated for over 50 years, but a new antibiotic drastically eliminated tuberculosis cases, and the hospital closed its doors in 1962. A renovated Waverly reopened as Woodhaven Medical Services a year later, but closed in 1980 after officials found appalling evidence of patient neglect. Though death estimates vary widely, at least 6,000 people died at Waverly Hills during its 50 plus years in operation. Patients often suffered through agonizing treatments during their time at Waverley, including electroshock therapy and experimental surgeries that involved collapsing a lung. The practice of placing heavy sandbags on a patient's chest was also common. More often than not, the excruciating treatments were not effective. Well known is a tragic story of a nurse named Mary Lee who worked treating people with tuberculosis who contracted the disease. This nurse found herself with a child from one of the doctors and unwed. The shame of this was too much for her and she took her own life by hanging herself in room 502. Tragically, her body lay undiscovered for a long time. The Martha Lights Mysterious glowing orbs that appear in the desert outside the West Texas town of Martha have mystified people for generations. According to witnesses, the Martha Lights appear to be roughly the size of basketballs and are varyingly described as white, blue, yellow, red or other colours. Reportedly, the Martha lights hover, merge, twinkle and split into two. There seems to be no way to predict when the lights will appear. They're seen in various weather conditions but only a dozen or so nights a year, and nobody knows for sure what they are. The Native Americans of the area thought the Martha lights were fallen stars. The first mention of the lights comes from 1883, when cowhand Robert Reed Ellison claimed to have seen flickering lights one evening while driving a herd of cattle near Mitchell Flat. He assumed the lights were from Apache campfires. Ellison was told by area settlers that they often saw the lights too, but upon investigation they found no ashes or evidence of a campfire. During World War II, pilots from nearby Midland Army Airfield tried to locate the source of the mysterious lights, but were unable to discover anything. It's always horrible when you hear that a child has gone missing, but George and Jenny Sodder had five of their children disappear on Christmas Eve in 1945. Their family had 10 children, but after their Fayetteville, West Virginia home burned to the ground, five of them including Betty, Jenny, Louis, Martha and Maurice were never seen again. The obvious explanation should be that they died in the fire, but no remains of children were ever found and it's extremely unlikely that the fire could have completely incinerated them. While the family did find a few remains in the wreckage, they showed no sign of fire damage and may have been stolen from a cemetery and planted there. It's theorised that the fire was started as a diversion to abduct the children as the house phone lines had been cut, and the family's ladder was found in an embankment 75 feet away. There were numerous eyewitness sightings of the children over the years, and in 1968 the family were mailed a mysterious photograph of a man who may have been a grown-up Louis Sodder. Sadly, George and Jenny both died without ever finding out the truth about what happened. John and Florence Pollock led a normal life raising their two young daughters, Jacqueline 6 and Joanna 11. This perfect family picture was torn apart on May 5th, 1957 when their two daughters and one of their friends were tragically hit by a car. They were on their way to church when the driver lost control of his car and slid into the youngsters. All three children were killed instantly on impact. Both John and Florence were understandably destroyed by this tragic event, but clung onto the hope that one day they would be blessed with another child. Their prayers were answered a lot sooner than they imagined. A year later, John found out that his wife was pregnant again. Florence's doctor informed them that she was carrying only one child, but John disagreed with this and claimed she was carrying reincarnated twins. This was a strange claim by John seeing that the Catholic religion stood firmly opposed to the concept of reincarnation, but that did not stop him from believing. He was convinced that Florence would have twins and the souls of Jacqueline and Joanna would be reborn. 
Against all odds, John's predictions on twins turned out to be correct, and on the 4th of October 1958, Gillian and Jennifer were born. John noticed that the infant Jennifer had a strange white line across her forehead, similar to her dead sister Jacqueline's scar from a bike accident. When he checked the baby's leg, he also located a birthmark identical to Jacqueline's birthmark. When the twins reached the age of three months, John and Florence decided to move to Whiteley Bay. They did not return to Hexham until the twins were nearly four years old. When the family drove through Hexham, the twins started pointing out landmarks they'd never been to before. When they passed the school that their dead sisters had attended, they swore that it was their school, and they used to attend it. The family started digging out old possessions of Jacqueline and Joanna for the girls to interact with. Amazingly, they were able to correctly name every teddy bear and doll that the deceased twins had owned. Their mother Florence started to notice the girls playing rather sinister games. One of these games involved Jennifer laying on the floor with her head on her sister Gillian. During the process of this game, Julian would calmly speak to Jennifer, telling her that blood was coming from her eyes because that is where the car struck her. A month or two later, the girls were sent into a state of hysterical frenzy as they walked past a car with its engine ticking over. They were screaming at the top of their voices, the car is coming to get us. John and Florence have always stuck by the fact that they never mention anything about the twins dead siblings until they were much older. Over two and a half years later, we have no idea what happened to Malaysia Airlines Flight 370, and today we were given the news that the search was suspended. I'd just like to say my thoughts got to all the families and friends who lost loved ones on that fateful day. Malaysia Airlines Flight 370 was a regular scheduled international passenger flight operated by Malaysia Airlines. On the 8th of March 2014, the aircraft disappeared while flying from Kuala Lumpur International Airport, Malaysia, to Beijing Capital International Airport in China. The aircraft last made voice contact with air traffic control on the 8th of March when it was over the South China Sea, less than an hour after takeoff. It disappeared from air traffic controller's radar screens at 1.22 in the morning Malaysia time. Malaysian military radar continued to track the aircraft as it deviated westwards from its planned flight path and crossed the Mela Peninsula. It left the range of Malaysian military radar at 22 minutes past 2 while over the Andaman Sea. 200 nautical miles northwest of Penang in northwestern Malaysia. The aircraft was carrying 12 Malaysian crew members and 227 passengers from 15 nations. Malaysia's Prime Minister Najib Razak has stated the aircraft flight ended somewhere in the Indian Ocean, but no further explanation has been given. Official announcements have been questioned by many critics, and several theories about the disappearance have been proposed. Some of these have been described as conspiracy theories. The possibility of a simple hijacking has been brought up by various news outlets. Speculation has mounted about the possibility that hijackers took the plane to a remote island, although no group has stepped forward to confirm it was them. However, unofficial researchers have identified more than 600 possible runways at which the plane was capable of landing. No confirmation has been received from Malaysian officials. Electronic hijacking Electronic hijacking uses systems and programming already factory installed within the flight management system. This is different from hacking or cyber attack in that it requires access to the Boeing security system through access purposefully programmed into the software. Notable proponents of this theory include former Malaysian Prime Minister Mahathir Mohamad. He said clearly Boeing and certain agencies have the capacity to take over uninterruptible control of commercial airliners of which MH370 is one. In this statement, he was referring to off-board hijackers with access to MH370's flight management system. Some have speculated that the passengers are still alive but cannot answer their cell phones, sometimes known as the phantom cell phone theory. This was based on early reports that family members of Flight 370 passengers heard ringing while calling the passengers' phones. This was after the plane disappeared. A number of theories suggest that the disappearance may be the result of a cockpit, cargo compartment, landing gear, or other onboard fire. In an earlier incident involving a Boeing 777 on July 29, 2011, Egypt Air Flight 667 suffered an intense oxygen-fed cockpit fire while still on the ground which destroyed the flight controls and instruments and burned a hole through the skin of the aircraft. Despite the arrival of firefighters within three minutes, the fire took 90 minutes to extinguish. That was just a few disappearance theories. Let me know what your theories are on this unsolved case. So that was 5 Unsolved Mysteries. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more countdown videos.